What's up guys? My name is Mike the Salting Fish and thanks for tuning in. If you caught my last video, you'll see that I got some food culture starter kits from Paul over at Fish Guy's place. Now, if you remember right, I got microworms, water worms, and some vinegar eels. All nematodes and the microworms, water worms, and banana worms can all be cultured exactly the same. So today, we're going to go over how to make a culture for microworms Walter worms and banana worms. Now these cultures here, as you can see, are labeled microworms and Walter worms. So we'll walk you through the process real quick. It might take you maybe 10, 15 minutes and it'll provide you a lifetime supply of food for your hungry fish. Now items you'll need, obviously, you'll need starter cultures. Here's where I go. You guys know that. Look about like this. And uh, you can get three starter cultures for right around 12 bucks shipped. Great place to go to, excellent quality cultures. Then you'll need something to put your cultures in. So I use these sandwich size plastic Tupperware containers. You'll need some cheesecloth or coffee filter to create a filter more or less to allow some air exchange in and out of that container. Some tape, a knife or a pair of scissors to cut a hole in the lid of the container. And that's about it other than some oats. Now, there's various items that you could use for media. I personally use oats, and you'll see how I do that here in just a moment. But first, before we can get cooking, let's set up our containers for these live food cultures. Now, to start making our cultures, we're going to need something to put it in. I use these sandwich size plastic Tupperware containers. You'll need some cheesecloth, or in my case, I'm going to use a coffee filter, some tape, and either a knife or a pair of scissors. Creating the actual culture housing is simple for the bottom part. No modification required. We'll use that later. Now for the top part, all we'll do is cut a rectangular shaped window in here and then we'll add our cheesecloth or our coffee filter and some tape to tape that over the top. That'll keep any gnats or other critters from getting inside while still allowing the culture to breathe. So just real quick, nothing fancy. Just gonna make a rectangle shape using my knife. Hopefully without cutting any fingers off. So, um, and it doesn't have to be a huge hole, uh, just something to let a little bit of gas exchange through there so the culture uh, can breathe. Turns out even nematodes like oxygen, so we gotta make sure that they can get sufficient fresh air. Down the last side here. Like I said, it doesn't need to be pretty. Any old hole will do. Then we'll grab our filter material, whether that's a coffee filter like this, or if you're using cheesecloth, cheesecloth may work better, but most people happen to have coffee filters on hand, and I found that they let sufficient air flow through there. I don't need this whole thing, so I'm just gonna cut it roughly a little bit bigger than the window that I made. So, as you can see, we'll see that'll fit over the hole, and then we'll just taper down. Make sure when you're taping this down, you're not just taping over the hole that you just made in the lid of your container, because that would be fairly counterproductive. Not sure if you wanted to spend the money, there's probably some fancy setup out there, like a, I don't know, maybe like a fruit fly culture kit uh, that would more or less do the same thing, but this is kind of like either what I had on hand or what was available at the grocery store. So, now we've got our lid, a little air flow through there, bottom of our container, let's move on to making some media. Off to the kitchen to cook up some oats. All right, now that we've got a container prepared, we're gonna go ahead and prep the actual media. And the media for these cultures, we're going to use some plain, old-fashioned oats. 
We'll boil in, in some water for about five minutes, let them cook. Uh, and then we want uh, basically a shiny consistency, but not soaking wet. Too dry and it'll get moldy uh, and too wet and you just don't get a good yield. So we're gonna go ahead, add a cup of water and a cup of our oats and get this thing going. Once your oats are cooked to a consistency that you're satisfied with, go ahead and we'll pour them into one of our containers here. We'll allow those to cool before we add anything to the culture. Ideally, you're looking for about one half to three quarters of an inch of media in there. Uh, so if you need to make a little bit more to get there, if you need to take some out, feel free to do so as required. All right, we built our containers and we prepped some media. Again, these are just the old-fashioned oats cooked up and they're shiny wet, uh, but not soupy, not super dry, hopefully just the right consistency. They are about half inch to three quarters thick. Uh, generally speaking, you want more surface area across than you do depth down and that'll lead to the highest producing cultures. So we're ready to go. It's time to add our starter cultures once again. I did get the two ounce star cultures from Paul over at Fish Guy's place. I'm following his directions to the T. They're ready to go. So I have the Walter worms in one bag and the micro worms in another. Once again, they do use the same exact media. You can make banana worm cultures the exact same way as this. And per Paul's instructions, the best way to add these to your media simply to cut the corner off and pipette the little critters in just like uh, cake frosting I guess. So we're gonna go ahead and add this starter culture to the media like so. Squeeze that guy down in there. Let's say it's not in our project doesn't have to be pretty. Get about it. I don't know. Try to get as much as the starter culture out as is reasonable. So you don't spend all day on it. These things produce fairly quickly. So there's one. That's the Walter worms. Now we'll throw the banana worms. I'm sorry, the micro worms in the other side. Squeeze everything down to the bottom. And out she goes. Now the microworms, the Walter well worms, do have a, a slight smell once the culture gets going. But uh, as long as you're not keeping it by your bed or directly in the kitchen, it shouldn't be too bad at all. So there we go. We added our starter cultures to our media. Again, microworms on one side, Walter worms on the other. I'm going to go ahead and label these lids and then see prepared your containers, you made your media, which is just again the oats, you added your starter culture, and from this point on, all you gotta do, close them up, put them in a place out of the direct sunlight uh, temperature, yeah, they're fairly flexible, obviously you keep them warmer, they won't last as long, cooler they'll do a little bit better, um, but let them go, and in uh, three to four weeks or so, hopefully, you should be all set. And that's it guys. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple way to make some live food cultures that will theoretically bring you just about an endless supply of fish food, particularly for your fry, for not a whole lot of dough. So once you get your starter cultures, again, I recommend Paul over at Fish Guy's Place. Just need a couple basic materials. I mean, these containers are about three bucks. You can get some coffee filters for maybe a dollar and a bag of oats for three or four bucks, and you're well on your way. Now. I wish you the best of luck in your endeavors. Hopefully this works out for you. If you have any questions, feel free to message me. If I can't answer your questions about them, I'll definitely put you in touch with Paul, who's a great guy. Definitely tons of help with regards to the fish community 
particularly live food cultures themselves. Feel free to leave a comment down below. What do you plan on feeding your live food cultures to? And what's your next live food culture that you may have not tried so far? Look forward to reading. We'll see you next time. This is Mike at All Things Fish. Have a good night.